morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Thursday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and last night the Mets took the third game out of four against the team they are chasing for the second wild card, or at least one of them, defeating the Arizona Diamondbacks handily last night, nine to nothing. Looking for the sweep today, finding themselves just two games behind the Cubs, and 17 games to play. Things are getting interesting. I'm going to talk about it on today's show. The Mets' bats burst out last night. Um, and interestingly, Pete Alonso had next to nothing to do with it. Um, he's been in a little bit of a mini slump in this, uh, in this Diamondback series, but it hasn't mattered. Um, Todd Frazier has done the yeoman's work of carrying the offense. Uh, he kicked things off. And scored the only three, uh, drove in rather the only three runs uh, on Tuesday night, and last night uh, he hit two home runs in the game to provide a good jolt of offense to back up Stephen Matz, who, while shaky at first, turned in another really good performance. He's been great in the second half. Matz has uh, just an all-around great game um, to, to the point where both the Diamondbacks and the Mets uh, pulled out some of the regulars in the late innings and replace them with bench guys and backup guys, um, which makes you think that both teams are going to be at close to full strength for today's 1 o'clock series finale. The Diamondbacks are in must-win mode here because they're in the same situation the Mets found themselves in last week, um, dropping those games to the Cubs, who, of course, the Mets were chasing. Or I guess that was two weeks ago now. Um, but, you know, the, the, that's where the Diamondbacks are right now, and the Mets are in the position where they cannot let up they must sweep today. It is a must-win game, not only to, to stay on pace with the Cubs and also with the Brewers and the Phillies, but to, uh, to, to be able to surpass the Diamondbacks, put them to bed, and keep pushing forward with after today with what will be 16 games to play. Um, from last night's game, just as I said, an all-around positive offensive game. Um, Jeff McNeil, two home runs. Um, McNeil's batting average has, has suffered quite a bit in the second half. Uh, he's dropped about 20-some points uh, since, since the All-Star break, but his power has increased. He's hitting more home runs. So it's, it's, it's a trade-off, it seems like, and I'm personally not a fan of the home run hitter version of, of I almost said Daniel Murphy, of Jeff McNeil. Um, I, I want to see him go back to being that slap hitter, that scrappy guy who is going to um, who is going to be able to put the ball um, wherever he wants on the field and isn't going to live and die by the home run. And that's what I, 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 I don't like to see McNeil turning into that player. And I'm not saying that he is, but he I feel like he might get a little bit pull happy if he starts getting some success with home runs and it's just going to suffer uh, his batting average is just going to suffer and his on base is just going to suffer and I don't know how much of it has to do with the the order and him batting third which I'm, I'm not sold on um, but w whatever it is um, I just hope that it doesn't affect his swing which is quirky and odd to begin with but look I mean this guy's been bounced all over the field he's played everywhere uh, and it, it's never bothered him I mean, he's, he's been able to play well anywhere on the diamond on the defensive side, at least adequately, and hopefully the same is, is the case with the offensive side as well, where if he can he can sort of adapt to the, the at-bat or the situation or the role that he's in in that moment. Um, that's the kind of player that McNeil seems to be, and I just hope that these recent home runs that he's been hitting over the last week or so uh, aren't going to impact him. Uh, speaking of home runs, another interesting stat came up last night that this is, I think it was the fifth time in franchise history the Mets have four players with 20 or more home runs in a single season. And that's pretty special. Um, I, I was thinking 2006 um, was, was another one, but it actually wasn't. Um, Delgado, Beltran, and Wright all had over 20. Um, Valentin and Reyes had 18 and 19 respectively, so they were just there on the cusp of the, the 20 home run mark. Um, but, you know, this season you've got Conforto, uh, you've got Man Alonzo, of course, Conforto, um, Frazier now has 20, and McNeil has 20 also. And J.D. Davis has 18, and I'm pretty sure he's going to end up getting to 20. So that's going to be five guys with 20 home runs or more, and that's, that's awesome. 
I mean, it's also an indicator that this is the juiced ball era that we live in, and it's going to end up in years down the road being looked back on like we look back on the dead ball era, like we look back on what will soon to be uh, asterisked as the steroid era in, in uh, the Hall of Fame and baseball lore and whatnot. But um, it's still cool to see this team putting together such uh, impressive streaks, um, juiced ball or not. Uh, the thing with the juice ball, and, and anyone that's going to complain about Alonzo's home runs, um, everybody's playing with the same ball. Okay, so it isn't like the Mets have a special ball. It isn't like years back when we had Colorado with the the um, uh, where they had the advantage and they ended up having to insert the humidor to change things. Um, it's it's not like that. Everybody's playing with the same ball, uh, the same juice ball. It's why home runs across baseball are up. It's why. Uh, last night, the single season record for home runs hit across MLB was tied and then broken. Um, and I think it was Jonathan VR who broke the record, which really says something because that's a guy who a few years ago was a, a light hitting shortstop middle infielder. Uh, so that's that's baseball in 2019. Uh, but it is what it is. And again, it's just taking advantage of what the game is giving you. Um, same thing with these different stadiums. You know, the, the, the Yankee fans who are anti-Alonzo because of the juice ball that he's going to potentially break Aaron Judge's rookie home run record. <laughs> Aaron Judge has been able to hit home runs in that little league field that you call a stadium with a, a right field that's basically um, someplace where the second baseman plays when they're shifting. So I don't want to hear about unfair advantages for, for anybody. Um, the, 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 the playing field is level for all players, and Alonzo, Frazier, McNeil, everybody else who's doing this across baseball, uh, they're taking advantage of what the sport's giving them. Enough on that. Back to uh, back to reality. Back to today. One o'clock game this afternoon, and as I said, the Mets need to go for the jugular here. They need to be able to step on the throats of the Arizona Diamondbacks. And Marcus Stroman's going to be on the mound for the Mets this afternoon, and that that's a little bit worrisome for me. I'm 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 concerned about Stroman. I, I just he has not had that signature start as we talked about after his last start this past weekend. Um, is this a chance for him to do it? I thought that the Saturday game this past weekend uh, was Stroman's chance to to really give that signature start and and put the stamp on. I'm here and I'm going to be a major contributor for this team. Uh, obviously, that was not the case. In fact, it was almost polar opposite because Stroman wasn't very good um, on Saturday night. Uh, so let's hope that that's not the case this afternoon and that the Mets are able to complete the four-game sweep and scoreboard watch to see what happens for the rest of the day because the Mets are in a position to pick up more ground on the Phillies and or the Brewers and or the Cubs. So... Um, shorter show today, but that's okay. Um, I'll be back tomorrow to recap what happens today. Preview the weekend series with the Los Angeles Dodgers, who just two days ago clinched the National League West. Um, unfortunately, the Braves are playing so well that the Dodgers cannot let up, so they're going to be playing hard because they need home field advantage for the playoffs. And um, again, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. So until then, I thank you for watching today. I appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.